What is going on everyone? So it is time to record my film reveal video. This is where I take a look at my film for the very first or second time. So I got back from the trip about a week and a half ago and I'm recording this on a Friday and I picked up my film this past Tuesday. And I did take a quick peek at the film. So uh, I am aware of the images, though I didn't really spend much time with them. Uh, but I did take that as an opportunity to uh, rearrange the film in the order that I photographed it. So hopefully that should make things make a little more sense and also make it a little easier to see the images side by side. Uh, I shot 37 sheets of transparency film. They're all in protective sleeves so I can handle it just fine. And uh, let's see how it all turned out. So this is the first scene that I photographed and it was an absolutely calm and still morning. Um, I knew where to be and when based on having uh, photographed this tree last year. And when I did that, the tree was very green, but now we have a little bit of green, but lots of just golden maple leaves, a little bit of leaf litter on the ground. And I exposed three sheets of film on this. Um, the first two were when the light was pretty decent, but then when the glow really started kicking, I exposed another sheet. Um, in terms of focus, um, I have it where there is some front tilt so that the foreground, uh, basically right about in here is where the plane of focus slices through and then right about here. So it kind of, it drops down uh, through the scene. And then as you stop down that wedge, it kind of, well, it opens into a wedge like that, which gets most of the mid ground. Um, it was very, very still that morning. And so I'm not seeing any leaf movement, which is great. Let's see how we did for focus. Yeah, it's very, very good. So as expected, the extreme foreground is not tack sharp, which is fine. If anything, I think it adds a little bit of depth. Once you get to about here, it's very sharp. And then all the way through there is very sharp. And then I want to take, out the, take a look at the top. Yeah, the rock face up top is tack sharp. Now this was taken with my wide angle lens, which is 150 millimeter. And because it's a wide angle lens, it is more forgiving for the depth of field. Um, so quite happy with that. That's when I was very uh, excited to see. Uh, this is mostly a variation of the same. And if I compare that to the previous one, you'll see that there it's not going to be much of a difference, though you'll see a little bit. So take a look at this area in here versus this area in here. So this is starting to build a little more warmth to it. Um, and actually look at the trunks there versus there. So this is my safety shot. This is a little bit later on. Um, the background looks the same, but it's mostly that area where you see it. Also a little more warmth in the grasses. Um, so definitely got a little bit warmer. And let's check for the wind. Not even a hint. Now what's interesting is that this is on Provia. Now Provia is a very neutral film. Uh, if you take a picture of a typical scene with Provia, um, it'd be like taking a picture of the digital camera in a relatively flat setting. And which is good because it gives the ability to have good detail in the shadow and in the highlights. But look at how colorful this is. And also realize that this is taken with a very neutral film. It was just a incredibly colorful scene. Um, so very, very happy with that. Now this is when the glow was pretty much at its peak. And there's a very long glow in this area. It goes for hours and hours and hours. And so we get a little warmer in through here and through here. Um, probably getting a little more detail in some of the shadows. Got plenty of detail in there and that is tack sharp. Um, a little while back, I would rig up a video camera through the loop to try to peek at it, which was kind of fun, but it still does not in any way capture the feeling of looking at an actual transparency. 
but this is a perfect exposure, no wind, ideal conditions. This is exactly what I had in mind when I went there, and I know that this is going to be one of the images for the portfolio this year. And if we look at the impact of light on this scene, so here's with a little bit less glow, and you can see that it's a pretty big difference. And then in terms of my uh, safety photo, it's right there. So this in its own right is very colorful and nice, but when you have that reflected light and that warmth, that is gonna make a big difference. So that's why there is, that's why I put so much emphasis in having you know, a very good subject in very good light, but I'm very, very happy with that. And it's crazy to think that that's Provia. A little further up the canyon, there is this tree, and I took a picture with my iPhone last year and I liked the form of these branches and how they're really filling the frame. And so I decided to expose a sheet of Provia on it. And I like it. I'm not quite sure what to think, but I do like it. Uh, on this one, I made sure that the leaves were in focus because it was one of the ones where um, if I shift the focus a little closer, it's mostly the trunk and branches in focus. But for me, I think this is mostly about those leaves against the background. Um, depth of field will be tricky, but it's tack sharp. Um, in terms of the leaves, it's tack sharp. So this trunk here will be a little soft in through right here, and then it sharpens up as you get back to there but the leaves all the way through are very sharp. Um, I'm not quite sure what to think about it. It's one I'm gonna have to scan in and get a feel for it. I pushed the exposure as bright as I could to still get detail. I was spot metering this dark area right here and then metering the bright areas. And Provia is far more forgiving on the highlights than it is on the shadows. And it's a very forgiving film, but I'd rather some of these areas go a little brighter than the film can handle. Um, and keep the detail in the, sharp, in the uh, darker areas there. But just one sheet of film on that one. And then this is the scene I photographed that is right behind that. Um, I like the structure of the branches and how they fill the frame. Uh, to me, it looks a little on the yellow side. Um, and so on this one, I'll have to see if I can, I might, tweak the colors a little bit to try to cool it down or make it a little more neutral. Um, I'll need to tweak that. I'm definitely getting a little bright in here. I can always burn that down a little bit. Uh, this is one where I will certainly need to see how this looks on the computer once I scan it. Um, tricky exposure because I'm trying to get detail in these branches here, and I believe I am. Yes. I am getting detail on those branches. Um, but yeah, I'll have to scan that one and see. Um, but depth of field is sufficient. It was a relatively flat frame. And this one, I was putting the dark areas of these branches at negative two on my spot meter. Um, that's where Provia is pretty good. Um, so I'll need to certainly sit on that one for a little bit. Uh, this is a little bit of a spur of the moment, experimental-ish sort of photo. I really liked um, all the leaf litter on the ground with the stone, something about those textures. Uh, but then this branch hanging down, so I used my wide angle lens, which I don't often use, but here I used it twice in one day. Um, depth of field is very tricky for this scene because these leaves are fairly close to the camera. This is further beyond it. So I did some reverse front tilt, where instead of, you know, for a lot of scenes like that first scene with the maple, I have it where the plane of focus I drop at an angle like this. Um, on this one, I actually brought it back like this. And so that way the plane of focus slices through the branches right down to about here. And then you stop down and you get what you get. Um, but the areas in the background are definitely not gonna be in focus. Areas in the foreground are definitely not gonna be in focus. 
But for me, it was all about this area here and then this area here. And let's see how we did. So just as expected, this zone right here in the foreground is in focus. You're a little softer as you go there, soft as you go there. And this zone right here with these leaves is in focus. You get soft as you go there, you get soft as you go there. And then the background elements are, are out of focus, which is fine because it's kind of clutter anyways. Um, I'm not sure what to think about this. I'll need to scan it and I'll need to live with it a little bit. Um, it's definitely chaotic, but you do have the bright tones here, a little darker tones here. So you do have a little order to the madness. So you have some movement like this, um, movement like that. So there's some stuff going on there. Um, it wasn't the sort of scene where I felt I needed to expose multiple sheets of film. I thought one was just fine. But exposure is good. Focus is good. This is the, um, the ground area in that previous photo. And I liked all the leaf litter, leaf litter, uh, leaf litter. I liked this triangular shaped rock and how the leaves were filling in there. And then I just tried to find a way to compose it so that your eyes can go here. It's going to explore around, but none of these other rocks are too big of a distraction. I will say I was a little concerned about this rock because it's kind of big. It, points right to the edge, but it really seems to point inward rather than outward. So that one seems to be okay. Um, my first reaction is that it's an eye candy sort of scene, but without as much story to it. Um, but we'll, who knows? I, I think once I get scanned and I'll have a better feeling for it. It's very pretty. I like the contrasting color, the cool tones, the warm tones. Um, the small shapes formed by the leaves, the larger shapes formed by the rocks. So I think I'm actually okay with it. Um, some maple seeds right there. One little green leaf. Um, I think this was my 240 millimeter lens or my 300 millimeter lens. I took notes on this trip in terms of which lenses I used because I know that even doing this uh, film reveal after the fact that I would fail to remember things. So this is the Ponderosa draped with maples and I photographed this with and without a warming filter and this is without a warming filter and you can see it's definitely a very blue light. I was a little concerned that a warming filter would neutralize the blues but I'll show you that film that piece of film in a couple sheets, and it actually was quite nice. Um, exposure, I was trying not to be too bright for these highlights, but I was also trying to show detail in there, so the exposure is good. Um, focus for this one is gonna be tricky because these leaves are in front of the trunk, and it's a question if I can get both in focus. I don't know if I can. Yeah, focus a little in front of the trunk, more on the leaves. I do wish the trunk was a little more in focus, but honestly, that's a lot to ask for an eight by 10. Um, I have a little bit of leaf movement there, but not, not in a bad way. There's a flow to it. I'm not sure I'm in love with it, but it's one I'll certainly need to scan. Um, this will be the next version of that. And I'm gonna see how the leaves did there. Tiny bit of wind movement, but not in a bad way. I mean, it's a fairly natural representation. I do like the warm and cool. I do wish the Ponderosa trunk was a little more in focus, but that's just one of the limitations. This was with my 300 millimeter lens. Uh, so this is the warming filter, and you can see that it has a far more 
natural look to it. Um, we still have cool tone on the trunk, but it, it looks normal. And then the leaves up here have uh, a normal warmth, warmth to them. So this is definitely a situation where the warming filter comes in handy. Um, not really much in the way of movement. Now what's impressive is that this is a 25 second long exposure. Think about that, 25 seconds in a canyon with hanging maples and the slightest of a breeze will move those maples. Um, so I'm okay with it. I just, I wish the trunk was more in focus. It's not bad though. Um, we'll see. I'll need to scan it in, get a feel for it. But definitely one where the warming filter was beneficial. Now when I photographed this scene, I honestly didn't know what to expect. And I'll say I'm pleasantly surprised, though it is very busy, um, which I knew would be the case. Um, so what I found to be interesting about the scene is you have this wall with all these diagonal striations in the background. And then the trunks you know, go vertical, um, so go in a different direction from the background wall. And then you have the leaves that blend in a little bit, the trunks blended in a little bit. So when I was looking at this in person, looking at it in three dimensions, it has a lot of depth to it, but I knew that in two dimensions, a lot of the tones are gonna to get lost. Um, and I think sometimes that can be a good thing because it shows the plants as part of, you know, part of nature along with the wall and just the chaos of it all. Um, so I'm honestly not quite knowing what to think about this one. Uh, it could be a photo where I'm just, you know, not in love with it. It could be one that grows on me. Um, there's a bit of a sense of story to it. Focus is tack sharp. Really wasn't any wind. So the leaves are absolutely still. I think this was my 240 millimeter lens. Um, I was trying to keep the floor of the wash out of the frame. I got just a tiny bit in there, but no big deal. Um, I don't know, I'll have to sit on this one, but I honestly don't really know what to expect. So, I don't know. Same scene. Um, I will oftentimes shoot doubles just because wind motion is a variable and I'm not really seeing any wind motion on this one. It was very calm when I was in there. Um, I think the light's the same. I don't think these were all that far apart. It might just be me. I feel like this one's a little cooler. This one's a little warmer, not by much. Um, I mean, they're very close, but I feel like if this one is a hair cooler, it might build a little bit more depth in the scene because you have a little more of the warm, cool thing going on. But they're very close. This is a scene I've had my eye on for a while now, and it seemed that it was always difficult to have the right sort of conditions at this corner of the wash where I wanted to have good fall color on these maples, the wash in pretty good condition, um, decent light, no wind, and I really did have those conditions on this trip. Um, I took a variety of photos of the scene as the light was evolving. So this is my first photo. Now what's interesting when photographing in these washes um, is you have a little bit of a cool light early on and yet the maple leaves are warm tone and you get this color separation where as I'm looking at this, it looks completely three-dimensional and I doubt that that is gonna translate uh, to video. 
but these leaves right here seem to be lifting above the blue on the background, which makes this look very trippy looking at it. Um, and I suspect that as the glow strengthens on the scene, that perhaps that effect may diminish because then you get warmer light back in there. Um, I'm quite good at this composition. Now, uh, when it comes to the composition, these branches ended just a little bit beyond the boundary of the composition. So I intentionally chopped off that edge because if the branches ended and then you saw just the wall there, um, it would create some visual tension over there. And so by chopping that off, you alleviate that visual tension. And so you see more of just the, the shape of all these, uh, these clusters of leaves. Uh, this trunk was leaning in, which I liked. Um, there's kind of these two groups. This branch right here was just reaching out like this like skeleton hand. Um, I'm quite good with this. It's a very subtle scene, but it really says a lot about the beauty of Zion in these washes. Um, let's see, focus. There's tack sharp. Yeah, so focus is a non-issue. Wind is a non-issue. And the more you look at it, you see like there's like this little branch down here with some uh, flash flood debris just hung up on it, which I think is good from a storytelling standpoint. But I like that. It's it's a subtle, quiet beauty. It's not gonna. It's not the sort of photo that's gonna punch you in the face. Um, but I do like that. Uh, let's see how the other variations of that scene are. This one there's a little more warmth to the scene. Um, in a way that is starting to reduce the blue tones back here, where it's almost going a little bit greenish. It's, it's not green, but there's, it's, it's changing, like the warm tones are mixing with the cool tones here. Um, and you get a little bit of that down in here as well. Um, I'm still getting that 3D effect. And so if we look at the two of them, you can see the cool tones there versus you're losing a little bit of that. It's getting a little more muddy, I think is what I'm going for. That was what I'm observing. Also look at the foreground, a little more blue in this one, a little more muddy in this one. Um, so I'm actually kind of liking that before the glow. Um, and then we will compare that to this one. So the glow is getting stronger. Um, my exposure is a little darker on this one. Um, I feel like it could have been a little, a little brighter. Um, I'm losing a little bit of that warm, cool thing. Now these trunks here are getting a little brighter in comparison to the background. I still think it's kind of that, that first one I like the most. Now here's the glow more so at its peak. So I shot this just before um, the sunlight, which is coming over the top of this sandstone formation here. So the sun at some point is going to start hitting my camera lens. So I shot this just before that. Now this one we're getting, um, the trunks are getting lighter as they're getting the light a little bit more than the background. We're losing the warm cool, um, but we're getting some of that reflected light. So now as an interesting comparison, because I'm still not quite sure what to think, I'd be curious to know your thoughts, whether you prefer the cool rendition or the warmer. And I think I would need to make this one a little bit less muddy um, on the computer. And maybe taking this one and cooling it down a little bit will give the desired foreground light I think somewhere in the middle, perhaps. Um, but that's one of the reasons why I enjoy getting there early, uh, setting up ahead of the light, and then figuring out afterwards sometimes which one's gonna look best. So this is a scene that I was hopeful for, but you can see we clearly have an issue there. Um, I should have waited a little bit longer. I did not realize that there was going to be some light coming in and uh, flaring things up a little bit. Um, so large format lenses, they put out a very large image circle, which is much bigger than what I actually get in the photo. And that's why you can shift the lens around. 
But what's happening here is that there was still some really bright sunlight up top that was entering in through the lens and was just flaring things up a little bit, even though I didn't see it on the ground glass. Uh, it's really hard to notice that. If I'd waited another 10 minutes or so, I'm sure that this would have turned out just fine. Um, I mean, I'll have to scan it. I mean, who knows, maybe that will be beneficial, but I, I highly doubt it. What I really liked about the scene though, was how this seemed to be coming out here. And then you have all this movement where it's just things are darting all over. It looks like there was like Tinkerbell flying around. Um, I like the composition. I was really liking this dead branch here. Um, but yeah, with, with that flaring up there, um, it just becomes a distraction. So I'll have to try another time, but definitely not quite working out. You know, okay, so this one has less of it. Uh, I got some full on flare right there. Yeah. This one's better, but it's still not great. Um, I have a lens hood I use, I've used in the past, but I really need to come up with a way of getting something that, like magnets to the lens board and has a little, little swivel of sorts. But it's something for me to try for next time. Uh, I got some wind movement there. I think that's a little distracting. Uh, it's just, it's not great. It's a little muddy. It's a little chaotic. Um, it felt good pointing the camera at something that morning. And for me, sometimes that's really what this is all about. Um, just going through the process of trying to find a composition, but, um, in terms of what I was going for, there are these you know, two clusters of trees there. I was trying to make sure that the branches had room to move into the composition, but that's a distraction. There's some wind movement. Even if all that was good, the light's okay, but it's not, it's, it's a tough place just because very quickly, I'm gonna have direct sunlight hitting the stuff in the background, um, so. It made for a wonderful experience in the field, but um, just not really what I was hoping for. Wind movement's a little better on this one, um, but still exists, which is weird because it was really calm, but you know things can move just a little bit and and it can make a it can have an impact. Now there's another photo a little later on the series where I intentionally used a very long exposure. I put an ND filter on and expose the film as the wind was going. And I'll be interested to hear your thoughts on that one as well because I am not quite sure yet. But this one, not a big fan of. All right. So this particular tree is one that I've had my eye on for many years. Um, and even though it does not have great fall color in this photo, uh, I saw this more as a proof of concept to see if I can get a composition on it. Um, because the problem here is that, you see that little tiny bright spot right up there? Uh, that is the sky on the top of the, the cliff there. And so trying to find a composition where I have nothing but this big wall um, but still giving the tree enough room. Uh, I was able to find something that worked. So much like the photo, uh, the first one I showed of the maple in the meadow, I think this is a scene that I will definitely need to come back to because I think as I get a bit more fall color on this scene, it'll make the tree stand out from the cliff a little bit more. Uh, but one of the things I liked about this was the dead grass there beneath the tree versus the green. And also notice that angle is the same. It's because if uh, a deer is standing here, you know, that's as far as they can reach to eat those leaves. So the uh, maples there are pruned by the deer. But I like the composition, I like the subject. A little more fall color would be good, but something to look forward to next year. And these were taken, I believe, with my 240 millimeter lens. Um, but it's a nice scene. 
and something to try for next year. Very sharp, good exposure, decent light, but something certainly for next year. All right, so here is the dead fallen ponderosa that is surrounded by maples, and it looks very much like this tree is on fire. And so I have two exposures of this when I was trying to have things as still as possible. I can't quite tell if there's some movement up there. Just a little bit. Not in a bad way, though. Um, but the exposure on this one, I was balancing the brightness of this with the darkness of these areas back in here. And so this is a little brighter than I'd like, but I, you know, Provia is pretty forgiving in the highlights. Um, so I can always pull that back, but I didn't want to have this just become dark mush. So it's actually a pretty ideal exposure there. Um, but I liked the angle of the tree here, not going towards the corner, but going a little offset. And then the angle of this, this, all those branches fill the frame, uh, trunk coming up there. And uh, so it works out pretty well. Um, but this is one of my uh, two second exposures. And then another of the same scene. Let's see how we do up there in terms of leaf movement. Yeah, this one's a little better. So I'm definitely a little warm on the exposure, um, but it should give me plenty to scan. And then I could always, I feel like I'll need to maybe add a little cyan to it, um, tone down the bright areas a little bit, but I think I could probably make that work. Now here's the thing. Um, so this is my roughly two second exposure. Um, I shot another one that I put a three stop ND filter on, which is this one. And so this put me up to about 15 seconds for the exposure. Now I'd be curious to see um, what your thoughts are on this one with intentional movement, waiting for that gust of wind, putting an ND filter on. Because it's interesting because now we see more so the structure of the tree because we have a little bit less um, conflicting with it, where here it's there's a lot of stuff going on. Lots of color, lots of shapes. Um, I'd say that the maple leaves and the tree have about equal emphasis on them. Whereas on this one, it's a bit more like taking a photo of, of a flowing stream um, with a bit of a longer shutter speed, where it simplifies the scene and then you start to see more of the things that are not moving. And so I'd be really curious to hear your thoughts between the two of them. I mean, there still are some fallen leaves down there to give a little bit of that impact, but I think I kind of like this one, but I think it won't be until I scan it that I have a better feeling for it. Um, but definitely a, a pretty fun experiment. And the cactus. So this is my first exposure, and this is before the light was building. Now I learned from the last time that when the glow gets really strong in here, it, it takes away some of the uh, depth of the scene. So in early in the glow, um, there's a lot of light hitting the cactus from this side, kind of a cooler light coming from this side. But as the glow in this canyon builds, you lose a little bit of that dimensionality. So there are better versions of the scene I have a little later on, um, but I wanted to take pictures a little bit earlier just to do a little bit better. Um, focus is tricky for this one. I'm using a little bit of front swing, which is where you take the, the front lens and you go to the side a little bit. And when you do that, your plane of focus is gonna move. And so I have it where I'm focusing basically uh, kind of between this and this, and then I'm focusing back to about here. So my plane of focus is this way, because for me, this wall is very important. This fracture is very important. This cactus is very important. This is not very important. So I'm gonna not have this within the depth of field. Um, and actually this cactus pad right here may be a little bit, yeah, that's a little bit soft as well. But I had to sacrifice this cactus pad in order to get 
this in focus and this in focus. And also I visually leveled the camera. And so you see that this right here is basically running uh, parallel with the top of the frame. Um, Cause I wanted to make sure that this looks solid and stable. And then this looks like it's breaking off. Um, so sometimes visually leveling your camera with certain elements um, gives it a little bit more of a, a solid uh, feel to it. Uh, in terms of exposure, I was spot metering off these leaves and putting them at positive two because I want to get as much detail back in there. Which I actually I do have detail back in those shadows. So when I photographed this last time, I was working on some compromised film. And what happens with the older compromised film is that it needs more exposure. And as a result, my exposure turned out darker than I'd hoped and also kind of muddy. So I should have quite a bit to work with here. But I'll have other variations of that as well. So this one you see we have a bit more warmth to it. I feel like this exposure is a little darker than the other one. But I still have plenty of detail back in the shadow areas. Um, so I'm not sure which one will scan better. Um, we still have our cool tone coming from this way, a little warmer than the previous one. Um, And then this one right here, which is a bit more, a bit of a brighter exposure. So between these, I'll have something that works. But I knew that if I didn't photograph this again on this trip, that this cactus would continue to grow and then it would really outgrow the composition. And it's pretty crazy how fast some of this stuff can actually grow. These little guys really weren't there last year either. But now it's almost like you have like the, the cactus that's being like separated from its little cactus kids, I don't know. But I'm very happy that turned out. And let's also check sharpness. Oh yeah, that's tack sharp. Yeah, so the wall is completely tack sharp. Um, this is tack sharp, a little soft there, a little soft there. But I got all what I really need. So this was a little bit of the surprise for me on this trip. So this particular scene, um, I've hiked past this tons of times through the year. I've always tried to find a way to photograph it. Um, and I was actually out wandering around without my camera. And I saw that even though I had taken a picture just around the corner from this a few days earlier, um, I saw that this tree is looking pretty sparse. There's lots of new leaf litter there. And I liked this rock to center the composition. I like that there is this um, broken up ponderosa tree back behind the maples and then the sparse leaves there. And so I like that there's, there's some motion here that kind of circulates around here, circulates around there. Um, I'll say this exposure is a little bit on the bright side, um, but I also happen to know that the other ones are a little bit better in that regard. Uh, wind was definitely a concern. There's a little bit of wind motion. It's not horrible. I would have preferred if these guys are a little sharper. Um, but there's, there's a lot going on here, but for me it's a very peaceful and tranquil sort of feeling to it. I think just the repeating shapes and the, like there's a positive negative thing. Um, so I'm very happy with that composition. But I also know I have more versions of that. This one appears to be a little bit of a better exposure. So this rock is still bright. Uh, it's darn near positive two on my spot meter. Uh, detail areas back in here are about negative two on my spot meter. So it's within the range of the film. A Little bit of movement on the leaves, but not bad. And certainly tack sharp down below. Um, this one's a little bit better than the previous one but a little bit of wind movement there. So this one's a little bit darker. Um, interesting story behind this one. Let's see how the leaves are. Oh yeah, that is tack sharp. Now what's hilarious about this is that this particular scene, um, so, I had a two second exposure. 
and I had my stopwatch in one hand. I have my uh, or I have my uh, my cable release in one hand, stopwatch in the other. It's gonna be a bulb exposure where you hold it down for the specified amount of time. And I'm sitting there, I'm just staring at these leaves, waiting for them to stop moving. And in the process of staring at them, somehow I flipped my stopwatch over in my hand. And the back side of the stopwatch is just shiny metal. And so I'm looking at it, I'm looking at the wind stops. I hit both the shutter and the stopwatch at the same time. And then I look down at the stopwatch, wait for two seconds, and I realize it's flipped around backwards and I, I can't see it. So in that exact moment, there's a chipmunk down in here that I kid you not, it screamed at me. And I panicked and I let go of the shutter. And now I realize that that chipmunk was there to help because two seconds would have perhaps been a little bit too long of an exposure, maybe more like one and a half seconds, which is probably what I gave it here. And it's absolutely dead calm. And I'm actually curious, and I don't even know if I'll be able to see him in here, uh, but I'm curious if that chipmunk is somewhere within his composition. I'm not seeing him, but they blend in really, really good. But that it's like it's like finding Waldo. But all I gotta say is is this is one of my favorite photos from the trip, and it was a complete spur of the moment because I went back to my car, got my camera, and I knew I only had about 15, 20 minutes or so to get the camera set up and expose the film before some direct sunlight would shift right into the frame. And so I happened to be in the right place at the right time. But I love the the motion of this. There's like the swirl that goes like this. Um, it just is really cool. I love that the textures, the, the light rocks. I've, I've been wanting to take a picture that involves the rocks and the leaves for quite some time, and this just has everything I need. So I'm very thankful for that little chipmunk that screamed at me. I think that's gonna be one of the portfolio, uh, print portfolio images. Uh, so this is the Ponderosa that I photographed closer to the end of the trip. I took this photo before the light was developing, just as a safety, because I didn't know if having a little bit of a, a cooler rendition before the glow would be better. Um, kind of like those maples against the canyon wall I showed earlier where the blue light sometimes is better. This just looks a little pale. Um, composition's tricky on this one. There's this big root that shoots out. I'm trying to minimize that and just make it look like a root cluster here. I'm trying to have this trunk not go from corner to corner. So it looks a little contrived that way. Sometimes you do better if you have it a little bit more like this, which is what I was aiming for. It's a bit chaotic. The light is not great on that one. Uh, light's better here. My exposure's a little dark though. Um, I'm not sure what to think about it. It's a little chaotic, but not necessarily in a great way. There's just it's a lot of stuff going on. This one's a bit dark, um, but I believe the next one, so this one we actually have a better exposure. Um, so we have good detail in the shadows there, highlights are not too bright. I don't know, I'll have to scan it and see. I might be able to work with that warm cool balance a little bit. I'm undecided. I, I do like how it has these tears in it, all the twists. It almost looks like it's like arms where it just fell over and died there. Um, but I'll say I'm not immediately in love with it. And then the roots and the maple leaves. Uh, exposure is tricky on this one. I'm trying to make sure I had detail in the shadows as well as in the highlights. Um, so I put, there are some dark mossy areas that I put around negative two on the spot meter. The leaves are around positive two. Um, it's okay. I think I'll need to scan it in to get a feel for it. It's just not immediately jumping out at me, but I don't know. Undecided on that one. Then my final subject, Fallen Cottonwood in the Main Canyon. Um, 
I mean, I did like how there was this tree back here, sort of the visual contrast of them. Um, as far as exposure, I'm probably about as bright as I can be without it being too bright. Um, so we did for sharpness. It's very sharp. A little bit of wind movement at the top of the tree. I was almost a little concerned that this whole area here wouldn't be in focus because I had to use quite a bit of uh, front tilt, but I'm actually pretty good at the very top, top, top edge. It's a little soft, um, but overall fine. I feel like this is one where I might need to scan it and then work with the tones a little bit to build up the richness. Um, it's not quite as dramatic as some of the other fallen uh, cottonwood images I have in this area. But also this is on Provia. The other ones were on Velvia, which is a bit um, maybe better suited for this. I feel like this one has a little less of a glow, perhaps. Still get warm light there, but I feel like a little less of a glow. Um, but overall, I have a lot to work with. Um, I'm very happy that the that first maple image turned out. Um, and then also the one where the chipmunk was screaming at me, that one's pretty good too. And I'll have to scan them in, get a feel for them, get to know the new images. Um, but definitely a lot of a lot of work on this trip, a lot of images captured. But I want to thank Evan for watching, and we'll see you around next time. You may have noticed this video has no ads and no sponsors, and I think it's nicer that way. If you enjoy this ad-free and clickbait-free content and want to help me live my dream, a voluntary contribution through PayPal or by joining my Patreon helps keep my gas tank full and my film freezer stocked. You can find more information by visiting my website at benhorn.com slash donate. I also have prints, ebooks, and my annual portfolio is available on my website. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you around next time.